Understanding the fundamental principles of behavioral learning theories is key to comprehending how our actions and behaviors are shaped. One of the central pillars of these theories is the critical role of consequences. According to Skinner's theory, our behaviors are influenced by the consequences that follow them. Pleasurable outcomes, or reinforcers, strengthen the likelihood of repeated behavior, just like how a treat encourages a dog to perform tricks again and again. On the other hand, unpleasant consequences, or punishers, weaken the probability of recurring behavior, much like how touching a hot stove leads us to retract our hand immediately to avoid harm. In essence, the profound impact of consequences in shaping behavior reminds us of the intricate relationship between our actions and the environment. By comprehending the significance of consequences, we gain a deeper understanding of the mechanisms that drive behavioral change and learning. Reinforcers, the stimuli that strengthen or increase the likelihood of a specific behavior, are categorized into primary and secondary forms. Primary reinforcers satisfy our fundamental biological needs, like the sustenance of food, the quenching of thirst with water, the comfort of security, the embrace of warmth, and the primal drive of sexuality. These primary reinforcers are inherent to our survival and well-being. In contrast, secondary reinforcers derive their reinforcing power through learned associations and societal influences. These can be broadly classified into three categories. First, we have social reinforcers, such as the uplifting effect of praise, the warmth of a smile, or the comfort of a hug. These simple gestures carry profound meaning, serving as powerful motivational tools. Then, there are activity-based reinforcers, providing access to recreational items or engaging games, which can incentivize desired behaviors through the promise of enjoyable activities. Lastly, we have token or symbolic reinforcers, which hold value due to their association with a broader system of rewards and recognition. Examples of these include the allure of money, the acknowledgement represented by grades, or the validation conveyed through stars or points. These symbols serve as representations of achievement and success within the context of societal structures, contributing to the complex network of motivations that drive our actions. Understanding the interplay between these primary and secondary reinforcers is essential in comprehending the intricacies of human behavior and motivation. Understanding the nuances of reinforcement and punishment is crucial for educators. Positive reinforcement, often seen in the form of encouraging words, good grades, or even shiny stars, encourages good behavior and serves as a powerful tool in motivating students. On the other hand, negative reinforcement operates differently, involving the avoidance of unpleasant situations. It's important to distinguish negative reinforcement from punishment, as the former strengthens behavior while the latter aims to deter it. However, when behavior needs correction, punishment comes into play. It can manifest as presentation punishment, where aversive stimuli are applied, or removal punishment, entailing the withdrawal of a pleasant consequence. Response cost and timeout are forms of removal punishment often utilized to discourage undesirable conduct and encourage reflection. It's vital to remember that the application of punishment should be the last resort, considered only after failed attempts at reinforcement. Behavioral learning theorists universally advocate for the cautious use of punishment, emphasizing the need for minimal and ethical implementation in the educational context. As educators, it is our responsibility to cultivate a nurturing environment that upholds positive reinforcement while employing punishment sparingly and compassionately. By balancing these techniques, we can foster an atmosphere where students thrive and grow both academically and emotionally. What keeps us glued to our passions, effortlessly absorbed in activities that bring us pure joy? Intrinsic reinforcers. These are the silent champions of our internal world, the subtle motivators that drive us from within. 
They are the internal rewards that come from engaging in an activity for its own sake. The pleasure, satisfaction, or fulfillment derived from the activity itself serves as the driving force. For example, a person may read a book for the pure joy of reading, or engage in a hobby for the pleasure of the activity. Intrinsic reinforcement is often seen as a powerful motivator that comes from within, without the need for external incentives. On the other hand, we have extrinsic reinforcers, these are external rewards provided by others, such as praise, rewards, or recognition. Extrinsic reinforcers are often used to motivate individuals to engage in activities that they might not find inherently enjoyable or rewarding. While they can be effective in the short term, over-reliance on extrinsic reinforcement for tasks that individuals would have done intrinsically may diminish their long-term intrinsic motivation. If external rewards become the sole driving force for behavior, the individual's interest and engagement may become dependent on the presence of these external rewards. Understanding the principles of reinforcement is key to fostering positive behaviors in various settings, including education. One of these fundamental principles is the Premack principle, named after the distinguished psychologist David Premack, who proposed this concept back in 1965. Let me explain how the Premack principle works in practice. Imagine a scenario where a mother encourages her child to have veggies before getting a yummy cherry pie. In an educational setting, teachers can use this principle by offering students the opportunity to engage in enjoyable activities after they have completed their assignments or participated actively in class. One crucial principle that greatly affects how we shape and modify behavior is the principle of immediacy of consequences. This principle underscores the profound impact of the timing of consequences on the effectiveness of reinforcement or punishment. When consequences promptly follow a particular behavior, the individual is more likely to link the outcome directly to their actions. This instant connection fosters a clearer understanding of which behaviors are desirable and which are not. Immediate consequences, whether positive or negative, hold substantial sway over the learning process. This principle highlights the importance of timely feedback and consequences in guiding and modifying behavior effectively. The key takeaway here is that the immediacy of consequences significantly influences how we learn and adjust our behaviors. Understanding this principle can help us create effective strategies to encourage positive behaviors and discourage negative ones. Immediate reinforcement is an essential component of effective teaching, but it's not just about when to reinforce, it's also about what to reinforce. This is where the concept of shaping comes into play. Shaping involves the art of reinforcing learners for making strides toward a desired final behavior. It's about guiding them step by step, acknowledging each incremental achievement that leads them closer to their goals. In the world of classroom instruction, Shaping is a vital technique. It facilitates the gradual development of complex skills by recognizing and reinforcing the building blocks of learning. Shaping is a vital technique in classroom instruction, enabling the gradual development of complex skills. Consider the example of guiding students through the step-by-step -step process of writing paragraphs. By providing reinforcement at each stage, students are motivated and empowered to advance their writing skills. The underlying principle of shaping is to reinforce behaviors within students' current capabilities, while simultaneously encouraging them to reach for and master new skills. This approach fosters a supportive learning environment where every small victory contributes to significant overall progress. Reinforcers strengthen behavior, but their withdrawal can lead to the weakening and eventual disappearance of the behavior, known as extinction. Extinction is often accompanied by an initial intensification of the behavior known as an extinction burst, followed by a gradual decline until the behavior ceases. 
Understanding the extinction burst is crucial in effective classroom management as prematurely giving in to the behavior during this phase can reinforce it. As an illustration, consider a situation where you're trying to discourage a child from repeatedly calling out answers in class instead of raising her hand. Initially, ignoring the child's behavior may lead to more frequent callouts, which is a typical extinction burst. It's crucial not to misinterpret this as ignoring isn't effective. In fact, persistently ignoring inappropriate callouts is the right approach. Giving in after several callouts would send the wrong message, indicating that calling out eventually leads to recognition and may worsen the undesired behavior, teaching the child that persistence pays off. Consider the simple joy of reading. For many, the act of reading itself becomes a powerful reinforcement. The captivating stories, the knowledge gained, and the emotional journeys within books can provide an intrinsic sense of fulfillment, diminishing the need for continuous external validation or rewards. At school, students can evolve to recognize that their academic performance directly correlates with various personal benefits. As they excel academically, they not only secure better grades but also earn the approval and appreciation of their families. Furthermore, a deeper understanding of the subjects they study naturally becomes an internal motivator, lessening the requirement for systematic external reinforcement. In this manner, the presence of these natural, intrinsic reinforcers gradually lessens the need for continuous external rewards, allowing individuals to derive satisfaction and motivation from within, leading to a more self-sustaining and enduring form of achievement.